Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Panel, in the establishment of issues of civil rights movements and social movements as a whole, there is a new evil that is grounding its way. The name of that evil is ignorance and inaction. It is the ignorance and inaction that stems from things like virtue signaling that tell you that what you do is enough that you don't need to actually read up on certain issues, that the majority of information, because it is so displayed and praised in such a way that it glorifies that sort of information, you don't have to go a step beyond that. Our argument for you today is that it was going to crowd out sources of information that is principally unjust to the sufferings of these groups and the third thing about how the comparative is better. In setup, we think virtue signaling is something that we'll categorize as the majority of information and posts that are shared during a period of time in lieu of something like uh, explosives that triggered the movement. Things like the George Floyd being killed by a policeman, triggering, uh, triggering the BLM movement, the post many posts of just like Blackout Tuesday or things like that. We define it as just a goal to find praise and that you're not actually sharing the movement, but basically you're just crowding out the legitimate forms of information that give you far more nuanced information. It looks like posting all of your back, black screens and never going beyond that because the society tells you it's enough. The counterfactual we support is that we want individuals to uh, post based on an idea that you don't require praise in order to uh, be an activist, that you should post more legitimate forms of information and be introspectively initiated into wanting to find information on your own. We say this debate is not specifically about how these things will occur, but if it can be done, which side uh, should it be done? Should, inf should individuals be more likely to find legitimate forms of information? In positioning, we're going to prove to you two things. One, we need to prove that virtual signaling is an instrumentalizing of suffering of others. And two, how it prevents and crowds out information, which is far better. We're not defending a world where this information does not exist. And we support that uh, like sources have legitimate nuanced information on both sides. It's just a matter of redirecting individuals. So in the first point of how it crowds out this legitimate information. So virtue signaling is more common than not something with very little detail. So you do things like you retweet the hashtags of Black Lives Matter. You retweet people like John Boyega and Michael B. Jordan going up there, celebrities who are just talking quite vaguely about issues that they don't, not, don't know much about because of the praise and the influx that you get beyond that. We say individuals never actually go beyond that source of, of, of aid, right? These are just the taglines that they want to push to you so that they don't have to do anything else. We say that this information is likely to be very insufficient for three reasons. Number one, this information for it to be shared among many people has to be very digestible. So it emphasizes the trend of the movement, but not the actual progress. So this is not a page about what you can do about the BLM movement. It is not a petition or so-and-so. It is rather a reposting of an opinion or an idea that you are supporting the movement just by creating a form of awareness. Second thing, it's likely to be very emotional information. So a post by LeBron James may be very like tegrot and tender to the heartstrings of individuals, but it does not show you anything about actually how you can help the movement and reposting it does not do much to do anything as such. The third thing is, it's signaling that it's okay to just only post for BLM. So because virtual signaling by its own meaning means that you get a bunch of praise for this, individuals never push you to say, maybe you should look into more things. Maybe this is not so sufficient. What is the impact of this? Three things. Social media has very short news cycles. So you have an X amount of time that an, that an issue can remain relevant in the eyes of the media. So in the issue of Black Lives Matter, we are already seeing it die down internationally. And most of the majority of the time and effort used by individuals has been used just to repost things. The second thing is fatigue and desensitization. So we don't think that you can just like manufacture the amount of relevancy that occurs. Therefore, the most important thing is prioritizing what things should remain relevant. If there is only a net amount of time that something can remain relevant, you being bombarded by these short tweets, by the blackout, by the blackout photos, all of these things mean that you begin to like desensitize. You just start turning off your apps. You're not likely to go read into things because you feel like you've known enough. 
there is no incentive for you to push further. But the third thing is, it drives down the incentive for, sort, for you to look into other sources. So even if you have good info on that site, you are unlikely to look into it because everything to you seems like good info when people constantly praise it. There is a signaling effect that you don't actually have to send into good info. Before I go on, I'll take a POI. Opening. Oh, so on your side, the chance of you guys having any bigger crowds, any actual real like protest is less likely for the reasons of how there's less information spreading to people and there's less people actually connecting with different okay. people, right? Because no, uh, no okay. one. I'm going to answer that. that. The thing about what a social movement looks like is I we contest the principle that you actually don't get any sort of lift off from the crowd because of the fact that there is already trigger factors and catalyzations of the movement being portrayed in international media. The only reason virtual signaling occurs is because there was a fan base to begin with. We see that individuals can equally just be like interested in learning about things like legitimate news, especially when you embroil the narrative to say that legitimate news is something that you should that you should be investigating into, right? We say that there's already a set amount of interest. That interest, even if it dies down slower, it occurs much more change on our side, the moment by which you redirect efforts into doing legitimate things. So things like signing petitions, calling your congressman, things like um, avoiding and fixing the microaggressions within you are so much more beneficial than just reposting and gaining the fair amount of awareness. Second thing, it is principally unjust to instrumentalize the suffering of this group. The tokenistic incentive to post this is utilizing the suffering of others to just say, look at me and how great I am that I'm willing to put pity onto these other individuals. Understand that the movements of social movements themselves do not actually require praise for the, the leaders of those movements to want to get involved. It was the principle of altruism of individuals like MLK, of Malcolm X to know that even if they go against the grain, these are the things that we should fight for and we ought to care about even regardless of that praise. We say that it should be unimportant and the most in vulnerable actors in this debate are the individuals that use and sacrifice their self-esteem and their like praise every day to fight in a movement when no one believed in. We say that you co-opt their movement into becoming something that is just a trend. You cheapen that movement overall. The comparative is what? Three things. Number one, we don't crowd out these things because we utilize the fraction of like uh, attention that we already get and we move them towards individuals, move them towards posts that actually matter. Second thing, we actually incentivize people to care. On our side, it doesn't mean that individuals don't, on your side, it doesn't mean individuals don't care. They care about the things that don't actually benefit different things. So, and the third thing is, we maximize the usage of this intention that we get. So every signature on a petition that you get is something that ultimately means you are one step closer to something else. Any reduction of that is something that you don't gain on that side. You also don't get things like call out of things like uh, uh, microaggressions that occur. The huge influx of calling out police brutality and issues like that does not come from just sending out ideas of a blackout screen. It comes from ideas about learning why the police system was bad, of defunding the police. All of these movements cannot stand on their side. Therefore, go with government. I would like to thank that speaker for the fine speech. I would now like to invite the leader of opposition to continue the debate. Uh, Judge, can I just, uh, I just wanted to check it's seven minutes, which is right? Yes. Okay. All right, in that case, if everyone's ready, then my time begins now. Judge, we think the fundamental problem with our opponent's case is the fact that they don't consider the, uh, the essentials of social media exactly the purpose. We want to redefine this characterization as the social media is the most effective means of spreading information in this internet age. We think that in general, it's a platform where people have the freedom to speak on any issue. And it also means that it can create groups where people can spread these same ideas and give confidence to each other in general. We think that this idea of community is something that we strongly believe in on side off. And it's exactly why we think that virtual, virtue signaling is not necessarily bad. We tell you in this debate, that in a world-to-world -world comparison, we tell you that our world is comparatively better because we create and we activate so many more people to be less independent and be part of a group where they feel more empowered in general. This leads to our three criterion uh, that we will be proving in this speech of one, we empower the disenfranchised, two, we provide more democracy on our side, and three, we, have, we better utilize social media. So in this speech, what we'll be doing is first, and we'll be basically presenting our arguments, but we will be having our rebuttals linked into them 
to, their, to the opening government side. So first on the idea of com community, we tell you that the idea of community is, is it's a strong mechanism wherever you go, right? We tell you that in society, people rely on the fact that they have and are part of a community because it means that they're part of something, a bigger initiative than themselves. We tell you that this is one of the most important parts of social media. And it's the reason why we think that virtue signaling is good, right? Because we tell you that virtue, virtue signaling means that people are parts of small communities on the internet, which means that they're more likely to have this idea and this general sense of where they stand specifically on issues, right? We tell you that things like political movements and social movements would not be possible without this, right? Our opponents talked about how in their previous speech and their first talking about how it crowds out legitimate info uh, on prioritizing and uh, creating disincentivized people. But let's, let's think about it this way, Judge. Even if we do bite the bullet that there are some people who might do this for the clout, we tell you that in general, if people are bombarding information, it means that the generally the general population who may not care about this movement suddenly are incentivized to care because they know more about this uh, movement. And we generally tell you, right, if if they see that some of these posts are maybe a little bit, you know, biased, we tell you that people are more willing to research and make sure that they have the most credible info, right? We tell you that in general, people are curious, and especially if they're part of this community, they're more willing to speak out because they know and they have this confidence and they have this backing from their groups, right? In addition, we tell you that this fan base in general, that this fan base that our opponents talk about is extremely helpful because we think that in general, people are unwilling to share their ideas, right? We think that in general, a person on an individual level is not willing to share their ideas because they're scared about what exactly other people think. We think that this, this negative impact of what we, they have on their side is completely negated by the fact that they're part of a community, which means that they have the ability to speak out. They have the confidence and the support from other people who think similarly to them. We think that this is a strong impact that they cannot gain on their side because they have a select few point, select few, uh, Hold on. They have a select few people in their society who, who can speak out. They're lo only looking for these small leaders and a small minority of people who can actually create change. Yes. This debate isn't about people not using social media as a platform for change. It's about individuals who are actively instrumentalizing the suffering of the vulnerable as a means of a masturbatory sense of self-fulfillment to get praise, to not feel guilt. How is that an equal comparative on your side of the house? So we tell you that in general, right? Not every single individual is doing this for because they feel the pity on the others of individual suffering, right? But even if that were to be true, right? We tell you that in general, even if there are some of these people, we think it's more beneficial to the population and to the general movement in itself to have this kind of support because it means that in general, even if some of these people don't have the right motives, it means that these general mo uh, movements gain the right message. They gain the right, they gain the right, you know, demographic, and they gain a larger Group, right? We think that in general, it's inherently, uh, no thank you, we, we tell you that generally it's impossible for a social movement to get bigger without the support and these small communities ganging up together and creating this fan base in order to have this similar identity and this similar idea of what they support. Right? We tell you that movements like Black Lives Matter and the, the showing and the sharing of different videos of police brutality would not have spread without these communities. Right? We tell you that we tell you that this idea of virtue signaling ultimately means that these people can um, circulate the similar value and the similar media and the similar evidence in order to create this solidified message and a solidified identity. We think that this is not possible on their side because they do not have this idea of community on their side. We tell you that it's an exclusive benefit and we therefore empower the disenfranchised and the people who normally would not take part in these communities. This, link, this brings us to our second argument on the idea of long-term impacts, right? We tell you that because we have these communities in general, we empower the next generation, especially those children who are unwilling or are scared to see what the adults say, right? We tell you that in general, the only reason why we have so many young, young leaders is because they have these uh, virtue signaling and uh, the communities that they build online on social media, right? We tell you that in general, the youth are much more activated in today's generation because they're able to have this community where they show where they show similar ideas and they say that, you know, they have, they see that other people have these similar ideas and when they see praise on these ideas, right, it shows them 
that they can truly make a difference even at a young age, right? We tell you that in general, the, the, the difference between this generation and the old generation is that the old generation thinks of children as extremely small people who are unwilling to make change, who are still learning about the world. We tell you that, no thank you. We tell you that in general, this generation is different in that we're able to enfranchise a lot of these different uh, people and these different minorities of children who want to be a part of this world, who want to create a change. This is why we see people like Greta Thunberg who are trying to make a difference because they have the the support of many different adults and just many different demographics in general. We tell you that this is not an exclusive benefit that they can have on their side. We tell you that this is exclusive to our side because we have this general support. But also, Judge, let's look at it. We also tell you that another big impact is that by having a group where you don't have political virtue signaling on social media, you incentivize people to not vote. The 2016 election was a clear um, was a clear example of this when basically there was a lack of community and a lack of political identity from the social media platforms because they were not willing because they didn't see exactly what was so good about these communities. We tell you that in general, if people take part in a single community, if people take part in these virtue signaling communities where they think that people have generally the same ideas, it means that people have the, the same motive and it means that people are willing to vote in general in the long term because more people know about what's going on. People know more and are bombarded with this information about what's bad, what's good in general. And so we think that in general, because people have this bump, we think that comparatively our world is better to their world because we provide much more information and much more enfranchisement. Thank you. And for all these reasons, we strongly urge you to vote for all. I would like uh, to okay? thank, yes? Is you okay with the toilet for a quick second? I'm so sorry. Uh, judge, is it okay if I use the toilet for a quick second? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, thank you so much. I'm back. All right, thank you. I would like to thank that speaker for that fine speech. It's now time to welcome to the floor the Deputy Prime Minister. Hi, am I audible? Yes. Thank you. In three, two, one. Judge, let us be clear on the comparative of this debate. Opposition doesn't stand for the sufferings of the vulnerable. They stand to share tweets and share their points of views merely for their own self-interest, to garner praise and acknowledgement from individuals of their community, to prevent themselves from feeling guilt of not being actively aware of the problems and not being actively a participant of the fight for the BLM, such as not going for protests, such as not going for rallies, but most perniciously, on their side of the house, all they get are the kinds of reactions that they want people to have for them, not a reaction that is beneficial for the social movement as a whole. I think it was detrimental for opening opposition to completely neglect the framing that Jerome gave you in this speech. That on our side of the house, social media is still going to be used as a platform to garner change for social movements. That BLM will still end up sharing a lot of information on videos, on five minute videos of police brutality, showing a police individual pushing down a 75 year old man who just walked in their way, shooting tear gas at individuals and actually posting about the ways in which every single individual can contribute to the Black Lives Matters movement, not simply a view that you're sympathetic about the BLM and that you care, but in the reality of the world of opposition, you don't, that you're only there for the hot reacts that they want on their side of the house. Two key questions in this speech. 
Firstly, in which world do we have better support for social movements? And second, in which world are the youth more empowered and a principle on why it's abhorrent to instrumentalize the suffering of the vulnerable for a sense of masturbatory self-fulfillment? We think let's be clear with the one clear framing that we would have against opposition. The entire three minutes of LO speech about why social media is a really good platform for change is non-contentious in this debate. We told you social media is a great platform of change, but it has its own issues with the 24-hour news cycle effects, with the fact that you can be bombarded with so many stories and so many tweets of information, you end up being desensitized about the issue, that you end up feeling as though you already know enough because every single individual is simply tweaking the bare minimum and it creates a normative effect as to what individuals feel as though it's sufficient for them to, uh, for them to participate in the social movement, for example. Those are the pernicious harms which they need to deal with, not the fact that social media has an ever-reaching reach to society. We call those benefits better when the information that's actually being shared isn't just one or two points of view that you're sympathetic about the BLM, but actual videos of police brutality, but actual ways you can contribute to the movement and actual ways you can join protests and join rallies on our side of the house. First question then, where is the support for social movements better? On the other side of the house, they argue that they have a greater spread of information because apparently you have a sense of community on your side of the house. I would question that the community on your side of the house is one that's tokenistic in nature and not one that's actively care, that one that actively cares for the BLM movement as a whole. Why is this true? Jerome gave you strong characterization as to what kinds of information you're sharing, that your point of view isn't structural ways you can help the BLM, but to in order to garner praise and garner acknowledgement, you're likely to be an individual that one that prioritizes your own self-interest and it's merely doing so because society as a whole has become more aware of the issue and you're trying to prevent yourself from feeling guilt. That means the things you're sharing isn't going to be, here are 10 ways in a whole paragraph about how you can help the BLM and how you can donate to movements and, and social rights organizations. It's oftentimes going to be retweeting of celebrities tweets. It's oftentimes going to be one, two lines which are very catchy in nature but don't truly have a real, a real meaning behind them and don't tell individuals how they can actively participate in the movement as a whole. This means on your side of the house, the vast majority of information that is being shared is tokenistic and has no real outcomes. Maybe in your best case scenario, you get more individuals to be sympathetic as a whole, but we then question how exclusive this benefit is. We would say that the sympathy for the Black Lives Matter movement is one that's symmetric on both sides of the house. Why? Because the main problem that led to the collectivization of society is an overarching issue of police brutality, of the death of George Floyd, of the death of others like, like the thousands more in the past Breonna Taylor and ETC that literally have led to a world where police are able to be so pervasive in society. We think that remains constant on both sides of the house. That means on both sides of the house, you still have individuals who are rallying, continuing to rally. The question then is that effect and that momentum, how is that materialized? How does that materialize to change for society? Would we rather want it materialized into a world where people are merely posting one or two lines and that is sufficient? Or do we regret that and actually want more individuals to actively care about BLM, to actively find out about more proper information information. And that is the question of this debate. Second question then, after proving that we have we have sufficient spreading of information, where then do we galvanize more supporters? We think on our side of the house, we actually galvanize supporters that actually want to help the BLM movement. Why is this true? Because on our side of the house, the way we galvanize supporters is by actually sharing proper information about A, how they can help the movement, but B, sharing the proper pervasive harms that can garner far more sympathy and far more empathy for the BLM movement. Which means our five minute video on police brutality is actually one that's going to be clicked on because they aren't overcrowded by one or two tweets that express their own views on BLM. We think that's a world in which more individuals are more aware of the problem and feel more sympathy and feel more realistically attached to the problem and will therefore act out on a stronger structural level. But see, on individuals who don't think part, I think we'll just deal with this on the outside of the house in our actual worst case scenario. We think in the worst case scenario, individuals don't take part on both sides of the house, that is one that's better. Because the world in which you take part, you actively crowd up information, you actively create active desensitization towards the movement, and you create a world in which proper change is blockaded. We think that's a harm in which they needed to deal with. Second question then, how is this principle abhorrence to instrumentalize the suffering of the vulnerable for a sense of self-fulfillment? Not specifically, this argument is regarded 
regardless of outcomes, even if you have structurally proven to you that outcomes are far better on our side of the house. Not all actions panel may lead, that may lead to good outcomes are good actions in and of itself. Two important things to evaluate. Firstly, whether the intent of the action is one that's genuine and true. Secondly, whether the process is one that respects the dignity of the vulnerable. We think the intent is perverse. Instead of being truly aware of the fight social movements are sacrificing their lives for, instead of having real sympathy for the deaths of innocents at the hands of police brutality, you only care that people think you have empathy when the reality is that your heart is a void. You only care about A, the praise you get for being woke, and B, the prevention of guilt and backlash of being complicit. We think it's similar to slum tourism that's actively being opposed in the status quo, even if it may generate some some level of money for individuals who are suffering and even in some cases the massive backlash against charity that instrumentalizes the images of those who are suffering is when it's being opposed in the status quo we think on a second level it is the dignity of the vulnerable their suffering is actively being exploited by you their pain is being used for your happiness when you get praised more perniciously when it becomes tokenistic in nature you actively prevent structural change from happening because more people feel it's sufficient to just post one or two views and be legitimized in that nature we think that's horrible on your side of the house. We think the only world in which this debate actually creates proper change and structural reform for society is one where you care about the plights of the vulnerable, that you're willing to make sacrifices to attend rallies and march in protests, that you genuinely want to help the vulnerable. And the only world in which you happen is in which that happens is a world where you are blockaded by virtue signaling that is tokenistic in nature and that has no structural change. We are very proud to propose. I would like to thank that speaker for their fine speech. I would now like to invite the Deputy Leader of Opposition to continue the debate. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. I'll start now. As we look into the repetitive case coming from their side, talking about how these individuals that only care about themselves and trying to avoid backlash, we believe that these are things that just doesn't make sense. I'll have to just prove this of why this is just factually wrong to giving you examples, but also rebutting one by one of their repetitive points. So first talking about the idea of the assertion that they have that virtue signaling blocks people from uh, attending any other like actual physical, like real life movements, actually go to rallies or whatnot. We believe that first of all, this is total nonsense because even in our worst case, if they keep on saying that the same individual that only give some tweets or uh, post black pics would never indeed go to any rallies. We believe that on their side, at least those people would never even have done anything at the first place. We believe that they're indeed characterizing many people as selfish people that are likely to not do anything. We believe that on their side, it is likely that they would not do even a single thing for this movement at the first place. Right on our side, at least they're indeed posting these pictures and indeed posting these tweets to actually make others indeed more aware. And we believe that there's a high chance that more and more once it's spread, at least one out of the 10 people are more likely to go to the rallies and one out of uh, maybe even two out of uh, two or three or more than uh, uh, more uh, more than a lot of people are likely to attend actual the de uh, uh, these actual rallies because we don't actually know every individual's like a uh, choice uh, or like uh, and we don't actually know every individual's likeliness of their choice or whatnot we believe that for them to just say hey these individuals only post these things we don't think that that is uh, uh, that is a uh, uh, good enough rebuttal we believe that there's such a weak mitigatory rebuttal coming from their side but also they said that they don't actively tell you what to do when it comes to these movements we believe that that is also not true we can already see the idea of people tweeting out and indeed re, uh, resharing like certain posts talking about the idea of signing this petition because we believe that when it comes to the, uh, when it comes to especially petitions we're more likely to do much better for the reasons of how when it comes to petitions the only thing they need to do is maybe press a button or sign up for a certain thing and that's it right we believe that because of this there is more likely to be petitioned to be more successful on our side because if they characterize our uh, many people doing these things uh, such as virtue signaling is that lazy and indeed they're doing like reposting or whatnot posting these pictures or whatnot we believe that especially these people are more likely to sign petitions which actually which actually leads to a further change in real life we believe that because of these reasons uh, especially because of the way that they're uh, they have characterized the citizens that we're indeed portraying we believe this can actually lead to even further change in petitions or whatnot but also when it comes to the second or part of the rebuttal that i'll like to talk about about the steps of becoming an activist right we believe that first of all there is a gradual step of how you become an actual activist first of all it's the uh, first step is the idea of little gradual activities in sns right we believe that they will indeed do certain like posting certain stories that they've 
yeah. find discomf- uh, find discomfort in or try to you know when it comes to the LGBTQ community you would indeed post stories of your own coming out as maybe you are a certain sexual orientation or certain group of minority maybe when it comes to a feminist movement you show uh, or share certain cases of uh, sexual assault or sexual harassment to actually find comfort and find a certain community in place we believe that these are things that indeed happens and slowly makes you gradually change and indeed become activists that are stronger and stronger uh, stronger and these communities are what actually makes you stronger actually go to real uh, rallies in real life we believe that one of the third steps uh, uh, the second step is the idea of actual real life protest once you gain a certain momentum once you gain a certain acknowledgement and certain praise you're more likely to actually attend rallies for the reasons of how you felt discomfort and you're too shy and you're kind of scared before but now that is not the case anymore we believe that that is indeed the slow case, uh, the, the gradual change of how these activists will change on our side we believe that that is not possible on their side uh, like oh, yeah. they why? First of all, these people wouldn't gain attention at the first place for the reasons of how people post uh, uh, stuff about the Black Lives Matter movement less and less. The Black Lives Matter, uh, the uh, hashtag Black Lives Matter movement is less likely to show up on their side, less likely show, uh, less likely to show up on people's feed on their side for the reasons of how less people are posting posts about that because they ban, uh, they don't like, uh, they they basically block the idea of virtue signaling because we believe that even if some people are doing it for clout, some people are not doing it for the right purpose, uh, purpose because they're only selfish. We believe that it's still that contributes a lot to society. Because because indeed they can make the hashtag even more famous because they're using the hashtag, meaning that more people actually have that on their feet, more people will see that through other people's stuff. We believe that this can lead to further change and more and more people likely to attend actual rallies and actual protests. We believe that we are the side that actually creates even bigger real life protests, but also we are the side that actually uh, provides a bit of a bit more real life change for the reasons of how we'll do much better, protests, but also much better when it comes to changing governments or whatnot. I'd like to take on right now. Even if you gain some level of awareness, the collective virtue signaling lowers the standard for what being woke is. Why is a petition sufficient when on our side of the house, we see that's insufficient and that as a white person, you should also march alongside your fellow African-Americans? Okay, first of all, when they say they uh, like basically make the uh, value of what it means to be an activist or whatnot, these kind of things indeed gets degraded. We believe that, first of all, even if that is true, we believe that, first of all, it doesn't make sense, right? We believe that it does not degrade the value. Rather, we believe that when it comes to the idea of virtue signaling, it actually makes people stand up and actually become activists even further because you're indeed advocating them to actually go out. We don't believe that these virtue signaling is only about the idea of you should, uh, or only about the idea of, you know, posting certain pictures or cert- uh, posting certain stories or retweeting stuff. We believe that it also has a- aspects where indeed it tells you what to do. We believe that we can see this prominently in the Black Lives Matter movement that we have clearly seen, where they indeed give you certain petitions you can sign, certain things that you can do, what kind of policies that we can advocate for, such as the idea of defunding the police. These are things that have been prominently shown. We believe that is only likely to be actually active and possible on our side, because less people are actually posting stuff about these, meaning less things will be shown on their feet. We told you about this already. We believe that that is uh, basically about it properly. But also we believe that when it comes to the third point that I like to rep- uh, present about the idea of, uh, of uh, some of the examples in the previous past that especially proved the effectiveness of virtue signaling. When it comes to the feminist movement or the LGBTQ movement, we believe that the idea of people are actually showing out or giving their stories is less likely to happen on their side because their side says that because of the clout chasers, we shouldn't allow any, uh, any, any female to actually share their stories. We shouldn't allow any uh, people from the LGBTQ community to actually share their stories, right? Because it does indeed count as virtue signaling. We believe that indeed the idea of you posting your stories or whatnot indeed counts as virtue signaling because the idea of you trying to get acknowledgement or certain and comfort from the community to prefer the reasons of how you indeed presented these kind of stories. We believe that this can indeed lead to a detrimental harm of making these movements even weaker. We believe that especially because their side does not really cover the idea, their side totally fails too. So if we look at many of the criteria that they've been talking about, about how they're indeed going to, you know, show how uh, it can indeed suffer others, but also second about the idea of, of like a certain information are going to crowd out. One of, the, uh, one of the very interesting points from the first speaker was the idea of how their side, people are actually going to look at proper news, proper information but they never gave us how uh, how people actually do this at the first place, right? Because their side says, apparently our citizens are suddenly smart out of nowhere because suddenly we know how to look at actual news or whatnot. We believe that that is a total blank assertion that does not have any reasons to why that would happen. We believe that especially because they failed to characterize what their world would look like instead. We believe that because we give you the benefits of how, how it makes the social movement stronger, it gains people's attention more because when it comes to a movement, what you need is more and more people actually being a part of your movement rather than how strong your core movement is. We believe that also because we gave you the third reasons of how it actually empowers many of the minorities as we have talked about we believe that for these reasons i'm more than proud to oppose i would like to thank that speaker for their fine speech i would now like to invite the member of government to continue the debate hi uh can you hear me yes okay great 
um, starting, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, when Psy opposition came up and told us about how government has a repetitive case, today my extension is going to address that by directly pointing out the one parts of the debate that have never been discussed. Specifically, the fact that virtue signaling does not just occur among communities that we deem to be justified. Virtue signaling also occurs in places like extremist groups, in places that have far-right opinions. And in these cases, we tell you that virtue signaling has extreme harm, it causes people to join this cause and it causes polarization. So today, I'm going to firstly be telling you in more detail about the specific characteristics of social media, how it's become so self-centered and so um, focused on image that any political discourse there is not, um, is not in depth enough. Secondly, and about how this virtual signaling does not benefit political and social movements for various reasons. Firstly, because it forces people to take a side very quickly without proper consideration. Secondly, because it makes it harder for people and extremists to re rethink their perspectives. And finally, because it's harder to have constructive conversations. I will also be giving you a proper comparative on what the world would look like if there were no virtue signaling. Notice it's important to understand that no virtue signaling doesn't mean no conversation about political and social issues on social media. We think that there will still be increasing discussion because there's an increasing trend of people giving more new discussions with personal opinions and facts and fact checking and research and we think that this kind of environment on social media is very helpful but it's brought down by the presence of virtue signaling so i'll be in integrating most rebuttals into my speech but before that um a few rebuttals so firstly science opening opposition came up and told us about how there's a sense of community and how when people are set part of active communities they're likely to participate and how even if we can encourage one person to participate it's already a win right so, so a few responses to this firstly we think that the presence of virtue signaling means that people don't think about their opinions very very carefully because they see that oh this community is so big all my friends are part of this part of this community. They're more likely to join because they believe in the veracity of the facts that their friends share without properly doing fact checking. So it actually contributes to the bandwagoning effect and has a negative effect in the long run. And secondly, we say that most people who are already directly affected by the issue have already formed their own opinions. Virtue certainly applies only to people who weren't that caring about the opinion uh, about the issue before, but formed an opinion because they want to get um, because they want to be validated by their peers, right? We think that it's highly unlikely that this group of people who only engage in it for social media cloud are likely to actually go out and do anything. And we think that even if they do have actions like signed petitions, when their support is needed, they will drop in the instant that their support means that their personal interests and rights are protected. Because ultimately, the reason why they are giving this support is because they are self-centered and because they want self-benefit. And we don't think that this is something that movements should principally be supporting. Moving on, they also talked about the long-term impacts, how people are, children are empowered in the future. We think that it's very hard to generalize the effect that virtue signaling will have. We see all the time, for ages, people have been posting about wildlife suffering, about the polar ice caps melting. How many people have actually reposted and then gone on to sponsor a wild panda or gone on to donate to zoos, right? We think it's very unlikely that people do things like this. You can't just say that people will go out to protest or go out to rallies without, without talking about how people who only virtue signal are likely to do that, right? So moving on to my success. Firstly, on the characteristics of social media and why people won't research and won't go on, right? We think that social media currently is not just a place for you to express your opinions. It's become a completely self-centered platform where people only post stories that make them look good or reinforce a certain image or a certain um, perspective of themselves that they want to communicate. Right? We think that if you have a post about Black Lives Matter and then you have a post about you having lunch or tea with your friend and then a post of you going clubbing, we think that it's the, um, it, devalues the entire movement because it devalues it and it implies that this BLM movement is the same as a trend or a TikTok of a cute cat or a TikTok of a dance challenge, right? We think that placing this kind of content alongside each other with no additional commentary and simply a stating of your facts devalues your perspective and makes it less impactful in the long run. And it also creates fatigue and just makes it part of everyday life and not something that people should reflect on, right? We think that it's also wrong for you to have to validate yourself through others by expressing your political opinion. So moreover, we think that it's wrong for political and social movements for various reasons. Firstly, we think that virtue signaling forces people to take a side very quickly. Recently, we've seen in so many different social issues that when celebrities don't jump to express their views immediately, they're immediately villainized and vilified for not posting immediately. Whereas we think this is really wrong because people should take the time to research and form their own opinion, but this is not allowed through um, the current climate of virtue signaling. Nextly, we also think that 
because, because people post for validation, firstly, they're pressured to take the majority situation when things are black and white. And this is what I'm going to be talking about later regarding the Hong Kong protests and a lot of different social issues. And secondly, it's more likely that statements will be a simple mic drop statement just to gain social media clout and gain maximum attention because what they said is so savage or so cool, right? So we think that this is extremely harmful. Nextly, we also think it's very hard for people to re rethink the perspective. Why? Like I said in my opening, virtue signaling isn't just among our approved le liberal elite, right? It's also among people like extremists, people like far right people, people that are extremely racist. They can also post statements with their own view to gain validation from their community. And this has a very harmful effect, right? Because it gives a voice to a very toxic vocal minority and gives them a huge echo chamber. Yes, opening opposition if you like. No? Okay. Uh, do, oh, can I be on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It shows that still the government side failed to engage upon the idea of how. It is just true that once people are using hashtags more, it is just likely that those kind of feeds will show more on other people's stuff. Isn't this, uh, doesn't this clearly prove why people are more likely to have actual rallies, more people gain attention to these or what other Right, I, yeah, I understand. I don't think you have made a proper link between seeing a hashtag and wanting to go to a rally. Just because I see a lot of my friends going to the beach or posting about beach, beach fix doesn't mean I will go to the beach because everyone is doing it. And I I'm also have a point about how just because not every single person on your feed is posting a hashtag doesn't mean you won't see related content in your feed, right? If maybe half or a quarter of your friends are very vocal activists and you talk to them in real life and you see their posts or you read the memes, you are already likely to be exposed to this kind of issue. And you won't get the kind of fatigue that comes from seeing every single post on your social media be the exact same thing, which will make you even less likely to support the cause. So that's your um, POI dealt with. And moving on to why it's harder for people to rethink their perspective. Like we said, um, virtue signaling can also be among extremists, right? So the result of this kind of extremist virtue signaling is first, they become ostracized, which makes it harder for them to go back on their opinion. And secondly, because they've already publicly expressed their opinion, it's very hard for them to kind of go back and rethink. So we think that this is very toxic and creates a mentality of they can't go back, right? Lastly, we also think it's very hard to have constructive conversations because there are people that are in between or considering, right? There are people that are in morally gray areas, but can't express it in a nuanced enough way or are vilified for saying that they haven't decided on their perspective yet. For example, in the case of the Hong Kong protest, it was huge in Hong Kong social media. But what happened was that there were morally gray areas and people couldn't express their views in a more nuanced manner and that caused really harmful political conversation overall. So because of this, because we've given you nuanced analysis and a new point of direction for analysis, vote C CG. Thank you. I would like to thank that speaker for that fine speech. I would now like to invite the member of opposition to continue the debate. Um, is it okay if I don't turn on my camera because my internet connection is uh, Sure. Okay, I am the first speaker of closing opposition arguing against the motion that this house regrets virtue signaling on social media. Okay, so first off, I would like to start with some rebuttals before I move into my points. There are... Uh, the topic that I keep hearing from government side is basically a lot of people are participating in virtual signaling to get praise from other people and they just don't care about the actual movements. Now, I would like um, everybody to understand that people such as celebrities or like popular accounts, they don't just post these things uh, on random topics, right? They will look at they will tweak their content to basically what is the current popular topics, the current movements that people are talking about. And it is because many people genuinely care about these movements, like uh, for example, Black Lives Matter. There are people that are actually angered by the innocent killings of these African Americans that they made it into, um, they basically amplified this issue, took it to social media, and it became a very, very popular topic. It is because of things like this that many celebrities and influencers uh, had to post, uh, for example, like the Blackout Tuesday and things on their stories in the first place. And it doesn't matter if um, they, they don't actually care about the movement because either way, they will be spreading awareness and more people are uh, more likely to participate in these movements, as I will uh, point out in uh, one of my arguments. Now, uh, my first argument is that it's giving a lot of attention to a specific matter by virtual signaling. Because we are able to spread awareness of this certain issue to the public, um, by giving all this information, it's 
alerting others who don't know about this issue. And for the ones that do, we are reinforcing the message for them. Right. It's we're able to unite people who are fighting for the same thing because they are getting a lot of support for the things that they believe in. It gives people motivation to protest against something and to make the changes that they want. Um, my second point is that people are more likely to adopt the idea of change when they see others doing the same thing. For example, the people that are more likely to uh, to participate in virtual signaling for the cloud are like uh, influencers or people with very popular social media accounts. We see it all the time. They're sharing information on their posts, on their stories, links to petitions, sites where you can donate to help these causes. And there are a ton of people that follow these influencers, uh, for example, on social media. And let's be real, a lot of people just don't care about these movements but when they see the their influencers their idols uh doing these uh kinds of things to help the movements it is what inspires them to make change it is what makes them protest um it is because of this repetition that incentivizes them to make change uh, i'll take a pui from dg yeah, so you mentioned how some people might be prompted to take action. So can you please respond to the point we gave about how it prompts extremists to actually further validate their own views and participate in other extremist activities as well? Okay, so I believe that when there are extremists who are like against a certain cause and there are people who are validating them, it is more likely that they are getting a ton of backlash for the people that are supporting the right cause, for the people that are actually uh, thinking about these movements, it's more likely for them to um, stop yeah. what they're doing because they're getting a lot of hate and they're getting um, trash on for it online and uh, educates people about what they should be fighting for. Uh, with that, I rest my case. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank that speaker for that fine speech. I would now like to invite the government with Sorry, given the text. Hi, am I audible? Yes. Thanks. Um, I, by the way, I would prefer POIs come in the chat. Thanks. Look, two clarifications before we go on to the clashes, right? See, we think all bench card argue in the counterfactual where without virtue signaling, you basically completely lose all the information related to such causes, right? Let's note that this motion only talks about the cases where, for example, we post stories because they want recognition and praise. That doesn't mean you remove all people for general make changes to society, right? But the entire op bench, they're basically chirping the case where we have like no, no parts related to social causes. We don't think that's fair and in the spirit of the debate anyway. Secondly, note that as Kylie said, not, not all virtue signaling is even for liberal democratic cause. We think that the fundamental inability of the other three houses to engage our house in terms of where the debate lies and how this debate extends to beyond liberal elites is precisely why we think CG uniquely wins this debate because we actually tell you the entire scope of this debate and how this isn't limited to a very niche or very like um, concentrated group. Well, let's go into the clashes, right? Let's first deal with like CEO's very niche extension. Like apart from being a complete rehash of what's what has already gone in this debate, when, when you talk about celebrities without really adding a lot of substantive value to a particular debate, no two things, right? They basically argue that oh celebrities show awareness and that like there's much because follow celebrities parents with good support. These photos just like show support for Can I hold you for a moment? Um, um, am I the only one for whom um, this debate is breaking? 
No. But yeah, it's lagging for me too. This video is lagging. Can you hear me properly? Yeah, the last person who spoke, I could hear them, but the debater yeah. was giving the speech. Um, you started breaking up in the last 30 seconds. We could hear you initially. Maybe if you could turn off okay. your video, if that might stabilize the connection. Sorry? Oh, he accidentally disconnected. I think, is it all right if he uses my computer to speak? Sure. So, no CG Kylie Chong. Okay, great. Uh, give us one sec. Thank you. Okay. No worries. Okay, go. Hi, am I audible now? Yes. Right. Um, sorry, uh, where did you say I left off? Um, so you were starting off with your rebuttal to the extension. Uh, okay, right. And that would be around 110 or one around 110, right? I think so. Right, thank you so much. Um, right, I'll begin now. Right, so onto Seal's very niche extension, which we think is a complete rehash of what has already gone in this debate, right? We don't think that really adds a lot of substantive value to the debate. But basically what they said was that celebrities show awareness and also influencers. And basically what happens is that these, these people who support these idols and celebrities would then go on to support the causes that these celebrities support. A, we don't think this is a culture that's inherently good, right? We think it's pretty toxic when you have a blind cult where these followers just like go on to support their causes but that the celebrities basically endorse without even thinking about it. We think these irrational like robots that unintelligently uh, support the cause it's a really good addition to the cause anyway but secondly we think that it's important to note that these can still take place under our contrafactual because note that not all athletes or not all celebrities necessarily do virtue signaling they can actually support the cause especially for example african-american athletes that have actually suffered from for example generational or intrinsic discrimination from society but secondly note that for example with the example uh, with the comparison of say lebron james versus like maya moore right one's an nba player that's really really world famous the other is the WNBA player that's like not nearly as famous right but note that it was who actually like did constructive reforms and helped like argue for example for judicial reform for to certain racial uh, right racially discriminated against inmates right we think that given how lbj only posts on social media but then we we say we give all credit to him and basically just causes his followers to blindly post about this in virtue signaling it doesn't really support the cause because it doesn't really produce constructive change right if the athlete only posts about it and his followers can also post about it but not actually go to rallies or try to like argue for like more activism and more um, constructive and real change, right? We don't see how that is necessarily good. Let's go into O, right? Basically what o, uh, OO gave us was that A, they gave us like the point of how the most effective platform today is social media. We think it's very important to class on the nature of, of social media, right? We think that given how sure it's very speedy, it's also very convenient, that doesn't necessarily translate into constructive progress or effectiveness for the entire social cause as a whole. We don't think that is entirely impactful in today's debate. Let's go on to why like less information publicity isn't necessarily harmful, right? We agree that sure, it probably like leads to less information. We don't think it's, the, the thing is like, we think OO neglects the fact that not all information is good information, right? Know that we think A, this only produces a monolithic mindset of the movement when you basically like translate the same information or you convert it from one person to another without thinking about what that means. B, you basically exhaust your audience to the extent that they lose interest in the movement and you basically turn off the people that might have potentially supported you. But C, you also complicate and make fact checking more difficult, right? So once you have unfiltered and censored information in your social cause, that might be controversial, that might be like very massively inaccurate. We don't think that supports the, the, supports the entire like, legitimacy of your cause. We don't think that is a good, uh, good thing to have. Secondly, what they said are like, oh, people are curious and will have the self-initiative to research and fact check. We think this is a, one of the most ludicrous things that come, that's come out in this debate, right? A, we think there's completely no justification for why this like is a likely scenario at all because they never really explain why people are inherently curious and they would do this. But also secondly, given the nature of social media users and how virtue signaling the motion itself is a form of like herd mentality where people like blindly follow and often like repost for praise and recognition only, we don't see how self-initiative and rationality really comes into social media practices, right? We think this is only more all the more unlikely given how this motion is taking place. 
Thirdly, they basically say that they encourage the younger generation to be socially active as well as like encouraging voters to vote, right? Let's tackle this in two layers. For the younger generation, right? Two things. The nation, we, we think the motion doesn't really deprive children and teens of social media at all. We think they just basically deprive them of posts and sources of information about social causes that are virtuous and that really don't mean anything or are basically just aspirational things that are very shallow and don't really talk about constructive reform. We don't see how that is a, uh, that is a harm. But secondly, we think that brainwashing or enabling children without active, like, critical thinking skills to develop toxic social media personalities or characters does not really further the social cause, but leads like cookie cutter or rational and unoriginal role of that's a public cause without really thinking through it, right? We don't think that really helps produce like constructive political reform in the long run. We don't see how this produces like collateral benefits. But note more importantly, what Kylie said in her extension directly tackles the point about how people vote, right? Note that she has already told you very clearly that this is not always a good thing, right? Virtue signaling can also occur in like alt-right conservative groups. For example, you have Heart of Texas, right? An alt-right conservative echo chamber, which basically like breeds and nourishes virtue signaling without like within like Southern voters in the US, for example, the 2016 election, right? You basically lead to a lot of these dedicated citizens that weren't that conservative in the first place, but now they become very conservative because of the echo chamber effect and they, you, you basically expose them to constant misinformation manipulated by even like foreign algorithms perpetuated by Russia. So when you tell them to vote, A, it's illegitimate, B, you don't even practically get the consequences you want on opposition events, right? You, you basically, this is completely antithetic to what OO wants for social causes because you elect a president that's obviously known for his bigotry and conservatives and not for like liberal elitism, right? Let's go into like what they said about the numbers game. The entire crux of OO's argument is basically as long as we get one more person to go to rallies, one more person that's likely to support the cause, then that's already good. A, we think that that could also be one more extremist, right? Or one more person put up by the relentless bombardment of these like motivational or aspirational reposts without constructive suggestions. I don't think you can fiat that this one more person is necessarily going to contribute to this cause in the best way possible. We don't think that's fair. But more importantly, secondly, we think one mindless and incompetent person who blindly follows suit can also discourage them, like discourage those on the fence and the moderates and even the natural observers and give opposition like fuel for vilification for like not letting nuanced const constructive discourse into the movement, right? We don't think that allows for like very good suggestions and discussion within the movement we don't think that's a good thing so for why we take over our, uh, our, our, our house our house basically talk to you about how oh this is like instrumentalizing the suffering of the other people we agree that this is morally important but we don't think that is ultimately that impactful right it's already a sunk cost and b we think we uniquely provide to you the exclusive benefits of why virtue signaling can like actually turn off people and how this also applies like minority and alt-right groups we think that sort of that sort of damage is much more impactful and much more long-lasting and permanent, especially given how social movements are like rapidly evolving in today's status quo. We think given the advent of social media, we should definitely steer, steer clear of like virtuous signaling. Very proud to um, support this motion of CD. I would like to thank that speaker for the fine speech. I would now like to invite the last speaker of this debate, the opposition whip, to close the opposition case and the debate as a whole. Can I turn on my video? I'm afraid the Wi-Fi will crash. Sure. Thanks. So we on site closing opposition strongly are against the motion. This house regrets virtue signaling on social media. So one theme or, or one a uh, few arguments that have um, that have been kind of reoccurring in the government side is basically number one that these um, social media users are doing it purely to, for selfish reasons and they're not actually helping the cause and um, it is very and it's very it, and it cheapens the movement I guess and thir uh, thirdly is that um, it will become the norm as in like people will stop actively going out to sign petitions and like do stuff um, and donate stuff and actually help the movement. So, um, so I on like uh, set closing opposition am going to argue that um, it that even if these people don't do anything, even if they're not part of the movement, that and we feel that attention is the most important, it's the most key 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 aspect in the social movement and is the most important thing to get something, get what we want. Why? So, uh, part, are you asking for PY? Yeah. Uh, I'll accept one later. Okay, so, so why is uh, attention very important? So like, 
um, my previous, I'm going to elaborate further on what my previous speaker has said. So, so um, when, for example, like a social media user who uh, randomly posts on something, on, on an article or a poster relating to Black Lives Matter, um, and uh, and without without really doing anything, but just to just to um uh to to show that uh oh, this is a very big issue and like you guys should be supporting this issue and stuff like that, right? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll set one uh, uh, later. So we feel that um some like spreading these kinds of things aren't necessarily bad because. We feel that some attention is better than none for some people who don't who are too who are not that exposed to this information or perhaps children who don't who do who are not actively going to to research very detailed articles on the issue at matter right and and this uh, leads me to my first um like outcome of like a very a large attention so Wait. firstly is that children. Um, people and people who are who don't have access to this information can um, even if the, the stuff the stuff that's shared is very very simple and like it's just a simple poster say oh support Black Lives Matter right? at least people are oh, and children are aware of the sponsorship situation and and people um and, and people for uh like form like a right quote unquote right opinion on like this matter because when you see a lot of positive attention going towards this uh, movement right they will likely change their opinion to like um to 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 go along with theirs right and you feel this is not necessarily bad like as mentioned by like the member of government um we feel that like um when people share these righteous views and 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 stuff like that um it is likely to be a good one like Black Lives Matter because they of course they want to get praise and attention from social media, right? So we feel that people forming an opinion based on other people's opinion isn't that really isn't really that bad because uh, most of our choices in uh, in real life are actually um formed by external sources. Like when we go to vote, like aren't we like biased towards something or are we influenced by an article we saw of maybe um be and like involved in corruption then that will this this uh th that will discourage you from voting for, for bm right this, uh, the same thing will go to here the same thing applies here right um where um it doesn't matter if like if uh your your views are shaped by others and we think this is a good thing as these views are generally the right ones Point. and secondly um okay yes even if you get some individual perspectives, those perspectives might not be productive for the movement, such as using violence in retaliation to police brutality. How is an indi individual perspective better than the perspective of the movement itself that knows the fight best? Because like these kinds of social movements, they, they, okay, like you can argue that, okay, one person may not make a difference May, may not make a huge difference and impact on social media, may not in, achieve much, right? But we feel this is how social movements like form become big in the first place. They gain one, what they, 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 they get support of, of people individually and they form like a whole, a whole community, right? Um, we feel that if more people have these kinds of views, then, then there'll be more people um, encouraged, motivated to vote to to support this view because because there are more people and when there are more people that's more likely to have more funding and and stuff like that so we feel like this is how social movements form in the first place and secondly going on to my next benefit of attention is that even if like okay it will go trending right let's say it goes trending it, it basically just tells you the magnitude uh, of the situation, if if it's this if it's this popular on social media, won't people um likely to 
to infer that this is a very big uh, deal and they should be aware of it and they should do something about it and like and I and this is like in a rebuttal towards like government where they say oh it's, they are likely to not support the movement if um, they see the exact same thing but we argue that it's the opposite because they, they know like what how bad situation is and why and like the fact that people, it, they're seeing it everywhere in social media is like even more like it, it, it proves their point even more. So um, let's so let's key, let's see in our best in our worst case scenario, they don't they don't do anything like with this with this kinds of uh, virtual signaling, right? They are just they are just aware, but at least this awareness can like they can they can continue on with a good mindset, and like um they will potentially like uh, vote or something like. Like to support this movement and like with more awareness I guess and with more support that means that we can achieve the move the social movement can achieve their goals even uh, easier uh, and so um, so like closing opposition really proved to you that get we are going to get more attention for this social movement than government side and that is the most important thing thank you Thank you for that speech and that excellent debate. Um, I might have had a bit of oversight throughout this debate. Ufi, are you there? And are you a code yard? All right, I'll figure that out if this room had a panel or it was just me. But um, thanks everyone. There isn't a panel, yes? by the way. There isn't a panel. Isn't? All right. Okay, nice. Um, Thank you so much.